Now we've been doing, what kind of functions have we been doing so far? Linear functions, right? Drawing straight lines. And with a linear function, oops, my markers flipped around here a little bit. What kind of, um, how is our, whatever quantity or whatever thing you're graphing with a linear function, how is it changing? Yes, it just kind of like, if we're talking about the, we had used, I used the example of the temperature outside. If it's a linear function, it just is steadily, it's a constant change, right? Say it might be, today it might be warming up by like maybe three degrees every hour. And if it's a consistent change, like say seven o'clock this morning it was 40 degrees and then at eight o'clock it was 43 and at nine o'clock it was 46 and at 10 o'clock it was 49. If it's that constant change. Now what we're going to do, we're still going to be using lines today. But what I mean by this word piecewise is it's going to have little pieces. So let's say, using our example of temperature, let's say that maybe in the morning it started warming up gradually. And then now as it's getting later in the day, 10, 11, 12, 1 o'clock, maybe it gets a little bit steeper slope. It really starts warming up faster. Or maybe if it was like this morning, maybe it was cloudy. And then maybe the clouds went away and the, it's nice and sunny now, so the temperature is really going up faster. So in other words, let's say if... Um, let's just pretend that we started taking our temperature readings at 5 o'clock this morning. Okay. Okay, we had Shannon take a temperature reading because I know she's out there at 5 a.m. practicing her golf swing every morning, right? <laughs> okay, so we got 5 a.m. We're going to do the hours. Or we're just going to do the hours since 5 a.m. So in other words, this would be one hour since 5 a.m. This would be three hours, so this would represent 8 o'clock. Okay. Let's say that at, I'm just going to start right here. Let's say this was, let's just use that to represent, maybe it was, I think it was like 30, somebody said it was like 38 degrees early this morning. It was really cold. So we start out here. Let's just say this is our slope. So this is four hours after that would represent nine o'clock this morning. Let's say after that then, actually let me uh, make that a little bit more gradual so this works out better. <clears throat> Let's say up to 10 o'clock, okay? Now we notice from that point on, it started getting, it really started warming up faster. So here's our warm up. Clouds go away, it gets sunny out, now it starts warming up faster. It gets a steeper slope. So this, these are their two separate pieces. This is a piece right here that has its slope and y-intercept, and this is another piece that has its own slope and y-intercept. Two separate pieces. Okay. So how I'm going to represent that, let me just get a little space over here. We're going to say, we'll just use F of, I'm going to use T for temperature. We're going to do a function of temperature. So F of T, now instead of it just like equaling whatever our line is or whatever our linear function is, I'm going to put a, a brace here because we have two separate pieces. 
What's the equation of that lower piece? What's the slope? One third, right? It was going up one over three, up one over three. So it's one third T. I'm using T because we're using temperatures. Plus three. My Y intercept is three. Good, Jacob. Okay. And that's if if the time is what hours are we going to use that piece of our function from yeah from zero to five hours right from we're starting at I'm saying my graph is starting at 5 a.m. this morning so from zero hours now it's starting at 5 a.m. until five hours after that from zero to five we're using that lower that first piece right so we're going to say if t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 5. So from 0 to 5, use this function. Now, the other function, what's the slope of that one? Yes, 2 over 1. So we'll say 2x. We kind of have to track backwards here. think, right? So our y-intercept would be negative 7. Okay. And that's for times that are if our time is what? over five, right? Over five hours. So if T is over five. So there, it's still a linear function, but what's different now is you've got at least two of them and they get used at certain at different times. So if I said, let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say I said f of three. So in other words, that's three hours past five o'clock. Would I use the upper piece or the lower piece? The upper piece, right? And actually, uh, yeah, because that we use this one for if t is between 0 and 5. And 3, this is my input. So I look over here. 3 is between 0 and 5, a time of between 0 and 5. So I want to use this function right here. So if I plug in 3 for my input, what would I what would my output be? it would be 4, right? Because 1 third times 3, 1 third of 3 is 1, and plus 3, so you get 4. Now what if I said <coughs> f of 6? Now which, which piece would I want? Would I want the first piece or would I want the lower piece? Why do I want the lower piece? It's, this is greater than 5. This, this lower piece here, oops, is for when t is greater than 5. What would my output be for that? 5. Because you take this and you plug it in here. So 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 7 is 5. Okay. Where this is a, a good section because it combines together a lot of what we've been doing so far. Graphing lines, using the function notation, um, the inequalities, kind of puts a lot of it together.
Okay, let me give you another example. <clears throat> let me make this a little smaller. Okay, let me give you, let me, I'm just going to give you, actually, let me make this a little bigger so we can see it easier. I'll just move it up here. Okay, let's say, and what you guys can do if you want to graph some of these, just take out that graph paper that I gave you last week. If you need it, because we're going to be graphing a bunch of these. If you need another sheet, just grab some out of the basket. Grab one out of the basket over there. Okay. So I would take out a sheet of graph paper, and you can copy down this one that I'm going to graph up here. Okay, so you can plot that on your graph paper. Oops, I don't want that. So what was the... Um, what would you say about the behavior if we were talking about temperatures? What did the temperatures do according to this graph? Well, what did they do first? If you kind of look from left to right. First they warmed up. And then on this part on the right, then they really started dropping fast, right? So let's write out the piecewise function for this. I'm just going to say most often we'll use f of x. So let me just use, and I'm kind of running out of space here a little bit, but we'll say f of x equals, and then we'll put our brace so you can write that down. What's going to be the equation of this piece on the left? What's the slope? One fourth, up one over four. So one fourth x, our y intercept is negative two. So we use that piece if our input is if the x is what? less than or equal to 4, because this is a solid dot. So we would say if x is less than or equal to 4, because we're looking at this part right here. So you use this piece if your x is 4 or less. Now the other one, what's the slope of that one? Negative 2, right? It's a negative slope. It's going down. So negative 2x. Go off your graph there and figure out what would the y-intercept be. Yes, the y-intercept would be 5, right? And that's if what would you say? If x is greater than four. Uh, what's that? 
we're going with this open circle here. So for that line, we don't want to include 4. Is this still, the way I have it drawn here, is that it's still a function? Yeah, why do you say yes? What does it have to pass? Yes. Good. It's got to still pass the vertical line test, so it can't overlap at all. You're right. That's why I put a closed circle here and I put an open circle there. Okay. Now, let's work. Now we're going to work the other way. I was showing you the graph, and we wrote the piecewise function. Now I'm going to show you the other way. I'm giving you the piecewise function over here, and we're going to try and draw the graph. So I think some of you guys might be able to do that. I'm going to let you. I'm going to give you a minute, a little bit of time to try that. So let's take a look. Where is the where is the point where it's going to switch from one piece to the other? Or where is the like what in, where is the where is kind of that critical point where it change where the temperatures where the slope changes? Changes at 1, right? Cuz you kind of and I'll show you a little quick way to do these here in a minute, but 1 is where it say if, like I said if the temperature was going increasing at a slope of 2, when it hits one after one hour, now it's going to be at a slope of three, so it's warming up faster. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Y-intercept is negative one. Slope is two. So I'll just plot a couple of those. Now if you notice, I stopped at one because at 1, it's going to switch to the other graph. So the other one has a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of 3. And that's an open circle. So this is a tricky one to graph. Let me show you another uh, a way that's a technique you can use. You don't have to, but you can use this to graph it. <clears throat> what you do is you just take, I'm going to break it into three steps. The first step is you take your whatever number this is and just plug that into your into that piece of the function. So when you plug 1 in, 2 times 1 is 2 minus 1. That gives me 1. That's where that line is going to end. And that's what, what kind of circle is that, open or closed? How would you, by, by looking at your inequality there, that's closed. So I'm going to draw a little closed circle next to it. Okay. Then we'll take, I'll do a different color. Then we'll take and put this one into this piece of the function. So if I input 1, my output would be 4. And that would be what kind of circle? Open. So I a lot of times like to just do that first. Take that number over here, plug it into both pieces of the function. That tells you, so now 1, 1 is a closed circle, and that's we've got. 1, 4 is an open circle that we've got. So that kind of gives you your um, points where you start your graphs. And then step 3, you graph your slopes. 
Ops. <clears throat> so now this one is a slope of two, so we go. The part that you really got, these piecewise functions really make you think. It says the slope of two, but it's for the, when x is less than or equal to one. So that's why it's got to go over here on the left side. Okay, if these just take some practice, let me give you another one. So let's see. Let's do this one. Okay, so if, if you want to use that, that little um, kind of shortcut that I showed you, or a little different way of doing it, okay, you take your 4 and you plug it in there. So we get 4, and that's half of 4 is 2, 2 plus 1.5 is 3.5, so this is what you had, Emily. 4 and 3.5, and that's going to be what kind of circle? Open or closed for that first one? Open. Yeah, if you're just looking at your inequality right here, it's x less than 4. So that's an open circle. For this one, I'll tell you, I'll do this in a different color. You plug your 4 in here, and we get negative 4 plus 3. You get negative 1, and that's a closed circle. So what I usually like to do is I'll, I'll put those two circles on the graph first. So I've got... 4 and 3.5, that's a, whoops, an open circle. 4 and 3.5, that's an open circle. So I put my open circle right there. And then my green one, 4, negative 1, that's a closed circle right there. So that's what I usually like to do. I just start with my two circles first. Okay. Then what you, what you have to think in your mind, since they can't overlap, one's got to go left and one's got to go right. Because they can't, in other words, if I do this and this, that's not a function, right? You can't have... That, what would that be telling us? Let's say if we had, we had three hours after 5 o'clock, so let's say we did 8 in, the 8 in the morning, we took our temperatures, what would it be saying could happen at 8 o'clock? Two different temperatures. You could have a temperature right here, and you could have a temperature right here. And that's, that's not a function. A function can only have one output for each input, right? So what we got to think, like I was saying, is one of them has to go left, and one of them has to go right. What about the red one? It's going to go left. Why does it have to go left? <clears throat> this is our, exactly, this is our x-axis. This says this function, if x is less than 4, this means to the left. The x's that are less than 4. Because we have 4s right here, and then 3, 2, 1. Those are the x's that are less than 4. So the red one has to go to the left. We've got a slope of 1 half. So just work that backwards to the left. So that's going to be down 1, back 2. So down 1, back 2, down 1, back 2. There we get our y-intercept of 1.5, which is correct. Okay, so there's that line. There's that piece. And it didn't give us an end to it, so you just put the arrow. It just keeps going. Now the green one has to go to the right then because it can't overlap the red one. And that has a slope of negative 1. So I've got to count down like this. Okay. Would that one still have a y-intercept of 3? 
It would. If you keep if you were to keep working it backwards, it still would have a y-intercept of three. But we needed it to go to, to the right so that it didn't overlap the. Okay. Um, you guys want me to give you one more like that? Should we do it? Let's, we're kind of half and half. Let's do one more. Okay. They'll, they'll keep going quicker. Let me go back to this graph here. They're going to keep going quicker the more you get familiar with them. See if you can graph that. So, I'm going to use red and green again. So, I'll use red for the upper piece. You put in two, you get two. That's an open circle. The green piece, we put in two. Negative 2 plus 1, you get negative 1. That's a closed circle. We'll plot those on the graph. 2, 2, so that's a red open circle. 2, negative 1, that's a closed circle. Okay, it looks as I think you guys are all doing a good job with the start. Now, the hard part, again, is deciding left or right. So you take a look at the red one. Is that one going to go left or right? Why do you say right? We want the x's that are greater than 2, or if we're talking about time, over 2 hours. So the red one has to go to the right, and it has to have a slope of positive 3. So up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. So there's our red line going to the right when our inputs are greater than 2. Now, the green one, then, has to go to the left. And we need a slope of negative 1. So we're going to work backwards like this. Because it has to have a negative slope. So the temperature was getting colder, it was going down, it reached a point, and then it started warming up. What's that, Anna? The red one? The green one. Um, we needed a... The slope is negative. So when you look at it, it's got to be going down from left to right. It's a negative slope. Okay. Those just, these just take some practice. They take a while to get used to. Okay. Um, let me go back to these other ones here. I just want to make sure I've got everything. Okay. 
This one's a little different. What can you replace though, whenever you have an f of x, or in this case, p of a, what can you basically replace that with? y equals, yes. Just think of it like your regular linear equation, y equals you know 2x plus 1 or something. Think of it as y. So if you have y equals 0 or y equals 5, when you graph those, if you were to graph like y equals 5, what does that look like? It's just horizontal, right? Horizontal at 5. You'll see in a minute here why we call it a step function. These are, this is a way you could use a piecewise function to model admission prices. Let's say you get in free. I put it, I put your admission price, I put it as a function of age because the price basically depends on your age. So you get in free if you're between zero and three years old. So yes. So this is our price. Oops. This is your age. So if you're between, oops, one, two, if you're between zero and three, you get in for free. But then the price goes up to $5. If you're over three years old, but less than or equal to seven. You can kind of see what the horizontal, how it kind of ends up like a step because your slope is zero. And then if you're over seven years old, you have to pay $10. Like that. So I'm going to have you guys see if you can draw this one, see if you can draw this step function. Again, this is, all, this is all recorded, so if you want to review any of this tonight, if you missed any of it in your notes, just take a look at it. Here. Okay, so... We're at level one, you could think of it, I guess, between greater than negative two, less than or equal to two, so you're at level one. Then you jump up to $3 admission price. If you're greater than two, but less than or equal to six. So far, is this still a function? Yes, it still passes that vertical line test. It can't overlap at all. You just always keep that in mind. And then you jump up to five. If you're greater than six years old, but less than or equal to 10. So that's what that step function would look like. <clears throat> okay. that down if you want. Now let's see, I thought I had a, yeah, let's do this one first and then we'll do the other one. So working backwards, this is the step function. Use the, use the proper notation to write down the function that matches this graph. Okay, so Draw 
draw your brace. So make sure you, I didn't get a chance to look at everybody's, but make sure you have all these pieces because you have to write the correct notation. So you're at, your output is negative three. Put a little comma there. If X is what? Jake? Good job. Okay. Your output is one if your input is Garrett, do you have that part? Okay, so yeah, greater than two. And you're right, less than or equal to five. Very good. And then our output is five if our input is, anybody got that part? Greater than five, less than or equal to nine. Okay. So if I said, say I wanted you to analyze it, say if I said f of 4, which piece would you use, the top, middle, or bottom? The middle, right? You look, you're looking right here. Between 2 and 5, an input of between 2 and 5. So my output would be 1. Yes. Okay. Got one last example for you. <clears throat> See if you can write the function for that. So, you guys are doing good. Let's take a look. We got. <clears throat> so, again, make sure you have your function notation. So you write f of x equals, you put your brace. I want you guys to write it the, you know, the same way. If you take this one, the slope is negative 1, right? Or negative x, you could say. So negative x, the y-intercept is 8. Okay. If x is less than 4. No. No. No, nope, that's a good question. The other one, the slope is 1 half. If you work backwards, the y-intercept would be 0. So you don't have to write it. 1 half x if x is greater than or equal to 4. Very good. Okay? So if you got that, you're doing very good. Let me just stop this.